a good test here for Rutgers on the first weekend of the season as we are underway. Cliff Amori winning the tip for the Scarlet Knights. And a quick first touch for Cam Spencer, shooting better than 50% from deep. Inside for Cliff Amori, who will have a battle inside, working on Abdul Kareem Koulibaly, the St. Bonaventure transfer, but Amori wins the first battle. And an early answer to the question, Dom, from Mass Lowell coach Pat Duquette, whether or not they would double immediately on Cliff Amori tonight. And so far we've seen, uh, at least on the first catch, no. Kulabali, a guy who has some mid-range game as well. Now he goes inside, tries the hook, missed that. Good defense from Amori, one of the things he's worked on in the offseason. Yeah, Cliff, of course, is so tough to shoot over, but uh, I, I would like to see Maslow get a ball reversal there and see if they can get Cliff to move. Okay, he using Amori as a screen there. Amori gets inside, and now he'll go to the line. Yeah, first foul on, on Amori here, so now we may see the doubling start to occur. Yeah, the Riverhawks are going to have to help down, uh, as most teams will. And for Cliff, with good reason, Big Ten coaches uh, across the conference have felt that he could be the best big man now in the league. And he's starting to shoot perimeter shots, so look how nice his form is uh, on his free throws. Just a matter of him being in his spots. Uh, I think, and the, and the players around him uh, being able to find him in his comfortable areas, and he can have an All-American year. Uh, Amori, the junior center, averaging 13.5 points a game. He scored in six different ways this season, including hook shots, mid-range jumpers, and, of course, everybody talking about the three-pointer that he can knock down, too. And he's got the first four points for the Scarlet Knights. UMass Lowell looking to get on the board, but Everett Hemmen off the mark on a three, and Spencer can't corral it so the Riverhawks will keep it. Yeah, the Riverhawks, they want to play fast, and uh, perhaps uh, Rutgers so far, uh, I think they would love to get settled into a half-court game and run when it's there. Uh, I think Mass Lowell, they, love, they would like to make this a high-possession game. Uh, uh, they did knock down 9 of 18 threes against Columbia on Thursday. Hammond tried to no-look at the Koulibaly, who found it anyway as Amori fumbled it. Abdul Kareem Koulibaly, his first two career double-doubles have come in the first two games of his UMass Lowell career, he can be an impact player today as well. And look, he was lined up. He transferred from Pitt to St. Bonaventure last year. Didn't play a lot at St. Bonaventure. He is all in this year for the Riverhawks to have a one great season. A lot mag off the mark on the mid-range. Steve Peichel, the Rutgers head coach now in his seventh season, said transition defense is one of the most important things the Scarlet Knights have to accomplish today. They again make it a half-court set for UMass Lowell, and they force a miss. Mag gets it back from Amori, but couldn't float it in. Well, there's the double, as we saw from the Riverhawks. With Koulibaly already having a foul, it is imperative that Mass Lowell, if they're going to be competitive in this game, keep Koulibaly on the floor as much as possible. Hammond accelerating. Allende Hakeem tries a three. No luck so far from outside for the Riverhawks. Team that last year was in the bottom 60 of the country in three-point shooting and struggled to defend it as well. Size advantage here for Mulcahy. Nearly half a foot gets to the back down. Forced off his spot, and Rutgers forced to inbound. Yeah, and that's excellent defense by Allende Hakeem, and, and, and that's, that's a coaching staff understanding the, the scout that if you double Paul Mulcahy, you're actually creating and playing right into his strengths because his greatest strength is as a passer. I'd rather him finish one-on-one -on -one against me and challenge him that way. The tip out here for Mulcahy to set up a flying Amori, but it's an offensive foul. Yeah, that was lined up uh, from, from a mile away. And credit Koulibaly with one foul already, stepping in, realizing I must get, I must get to that spot because if that's his second, that wrecks the game. But he's there in plenty of time, Dom. Uh, Cliff was just looking for a highlight play, being aggressive, picking up just his first. The foul on each of the starting centers so far. Two guys who could be the best players in their respective conferences. Kulabali tried to spin. Amori knocked it away. Boy, it's been a fun battle so far. Now Kulabali couldn't find it there. Now second chance. Hakeem off the pump fake. Sets up Allen Blunt, one of the many veterans on this UMass Lowell team. But the three-point shooting so far not working out. 0 for 3 so far.
defense first battle in the opening few minutes between two teams that love to play physically. And again, Mag on the back down. Spins to his right, and it caught part of the backboard. And again, good defense on the post. That's Max Brooks, and he is the reigning America East Defensive Player of the Year. Goes six foot seven. Now with Koulibaly on the roster, now he can play against fours and even threes on the court. Last year, he had to play a lot more against opposing centers. Still had a great year. He may become an even better defender and someone for Rutgers to be mindful of if you post up against him. Two to shoot. Well, Kehi, it's a long two, it won't count. UMass Lowell forces the shot clock yeah, violation. Yeah, look, someone has to communicate, and I, I think Paul knows that's on him. Uh, you've got veteran guards also like Cam Spencer. Someone's going to call that out uh, upon triggering the ball in, and no one on the floor knew that. And that, that's just, that just has to be over-communicated in competitive games. Rutgers' first substitution of the day. Derek Simpson, the freshman who has not played like one, is in for Mawat Mag. Simpson had his first double-digit performance in the win over Sacred Heart Thursday, 11 points. Brooks on the handoff for Hakeem, who tried to no-look it downstairs, a bit too ambitious. This is his most talented roster, in addition to all the returners like Max Brooks and, and uh, the two blunts that this team adding three transfers, uh, Division One transfers in Covington for William & Mary, Mikey Watkins, Merrimack, Koulibaly, from St. Bonaventure. They are quality, they could win the league. Tough shot for Cam Spencer, but he gets on the board. And as we saw Thursday against Sacred Heart, if he knocks down a shot or two, he can get going really quickly. And he plays under control. And that, that's it, that, there's gonna be nights where Cam Spencer think will look for a shot more. Uh, but uh, noticing the things about him is, is that uh, he never seems to be out of control. Brooks to the rim, lays it in. First two points for Max Brooks. Ralph told you about his defensive prowess, but can contribute on the offensive side, too. Had a 30-point game in the regular season finale last year. Yeah, an average 10 and 6 last year on top of his defense. Hyatt off the back of the rim on the three. Now, Mikey Watkins, the transfer from Merrimack, three-year starting guard there. One of the transfers, running the point. Yeah, Jersey kid, Linden High School and Union Catholic. So he played last year here against Rutgers with Merrimack. Again, UMass Lowell getting inside, but Brooks, no success over Amori. Oh, what a luxury it, ha it is to have a 6'11 center inside with the defense Amori brings as Simpson tries to drive the baseline and got fouled. Well, Simpson's speed, he provides, he, that's the component he provides to this Rutgers team. And uh, Steve Peichel lighting up about Jason Simpson from the perspective that, or rather Derek Simpson, that because he could play defense already two games in, Dom. How many times do we hear coaches say, well, he's going to have to catch up on the defensive end? Not, not for him. So far, he's made that adjustment to Division I level uh, defensively, and that's what's going to get him on the floor. And with him on the floor, it allows Rutgers to be different. Obviously the number, some of the jump shots, some of the appearance like Geo Baker, five-year star for this Rutgers program. Heard too from Steve Peichel that Simpson has speed like Jacob Young. Rutgers fans know him well. Hops like Corey Sanders, one of the best guards Rutgers has had in a decade. All of that to say he's played quite well. But now five to shoot here for the Knights. Antoine Wolfolk, the freshman, hooks it. And Drew Rim, but that's it. Again, great walling off by Koulibaly uh, against a big, big guy. And he went straight up, did not foul. Both teams won for their last seven shooting as Wolfolk went after that. Now, there's a reason why Antoine Wolfolk on a veteran Rutgers team is getting minutes early. It's a team that has been among the best defensively in the last three seasons under Steve Peichel. Antoine Wolfolk's best skill, defense. And I think uh, I could foresee a situation later in the season where both he, he and Cliff are going to be on the floor at the same time together. Late in the timer here. Watkins past Simpson. 
navigating and finally blocked away by Wolfolk. There's that defense. Yeah, look, he has all the athleticism, of course. There's a reason why he was a high Division I football prospect to begin with. He's only seven months into being just a basketball player. So you could see a real breakthrough from him very shortly. A quick in for Koulibaly, who got fouled. And the senior forward will go to the stripe. Well, thinking of the bigger picture for Mass Lowell, obviously it's, it's Vermont under Coach John Becker that has had the most sustained winning. They're the preseason favorites. Bryant right behind him, moving from the Northeast Conference, and Jared Grasso after going and winning the NCAA, uh, going to the NCAA tournament last year. They're one and two. But this Mass Lowell team, when you see them in person, those might be the two favorites, but I think it's, it could be possible that Mass Lowell has the best talent in the league when all is said and done because of what they added with the three transfers, what they brought back, and then the young man on the, on the free throw line, Connor Withers. Connor Withers had a great season two years ago, was probably their best player. Missed all but three games last year due to a foot injury. If he gets back to himself, that's why Pat Duquette feels they may have about nine starters. Yeah, Withers number five in blue defending Watt Mag right here. The Rutgers still with the lead, but now a chance at a takeaway for Watkins, who fumbled it. A nice idea. Watkins, one key for UMass Lowell is they try to improve their perimeter defense. And that's why they went out and they got Covington from William & Mary and Watkins in particular. And Watkins interesting because when he was at Merrimack, they played that, that uh, kind of a tricky 2-3 zone that Rutgers dealt with last year under coach Joe Gallo. Now he's playing mo ma mostly man-to-man. But foot speed is what something Mass Law was trying to improve on to improve their three-point defense and the rotations. There's some defense. And Withers takes it away from Hyatt late in the timer. And a chance for UMass Lowell to claim its first lead. And again, they work through Koulibaly. Backing down to Mori. No chance to shoot and didn't have the soft touch he needed. And you know, he had Rutgers actually doubled in that case to help out Cliff because he's got one foul. That's where a pass out and a ball rotation would have been better. Hyatt using his physicality, but maybe too sharp an angle there for that lay-in. Rutgers one for its last eight from the floor. UMass Lowell one for its last nine. We've seen Rutgers go on 15-0 runs early in each of its first two wins. Now, so far, the Riverhawks have avoided that. Kulabali takes it himself with the left hand. Maybe Amori got a piece of that. Yeah, he was asking for a goaltend there from the officials. But notice how the game has been exclusively in the half court. Extra pass for Hyatt, lines it up and knocks it down from three. Yeah, good extra pass there, ball movement by Rutgers. Andre Hyatt has always had the skill set. Just a matter of the confidence and the assertiveness to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look to be a little bit more of a scoring-minded player, but he's a winning player first. Withers looking for the answer. Oh, halfway down. And instead, Amori clears. Would have been a big early answer. And now Simpson using the explosiveness all the way to the rim. Yeah, that's why to unlock a defense, this game has been exclusively played in the half court. And Rutgers able to get what I would characterize as a secondary break bucket. Quick 5-0 burst for Rutgers. Not a bad look at that shot there, but off the mark from three. Omori, space there, looking at Mag, and it's picked off. River Hawks saw that. Yuri Covington ahead, fouled by Spencer. If every few years you lose a Ron Harper and a Geo Baker, and you get them and you lose them both at the same time, that might be a once in a decade proposition where you have that much of a percentage of your offense uh, uh, to lose and replace in one year. One more at the line for Yuri Covington, the southpaw. Got them both. Yeah, something that Ralph just mentioned, no Caleb McConnell once again today for Rutgers, out with that knee tweak, and they're been, they've been very careful in returning the reigning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year to the lineup. There he is. We ex expect to see him quite soon as this season really starts to get rolling. But remarkable to see what Rutgers has done without him as Amori spins his way to two. The Rutgers only allowing 41 points on average over the first two games without perhaps the best defender in the nation on the floor. Yeah, and it's scary to think what they'll be able to do 
with him locking up other great forwards on other teams and how aggressive Rutgers might be able to be off ball because of that. Quick take on the three for Connor Withers, but UMass Lowell 0 for 6 from distance. And now Simpson gains the first step and almost printed the poster. <laughs>
Jalen Miller, the defensive ace, is on the floor here. In the air that time, but Hyatt trying to interrupt Hammonds. Teardrop, good. Great penetration there from the super senior Everett Hammond, his first two points. And one of the reasons why the River Hawks can win the America East this year, they have experienced guards all over the place, in addition to probably the best size in the league. Amori gaining positioning and blocked by Koulibaly. I tell you what, this has been an awesome battle, Dom. Two very solid big men. Of course, Cliff, we know, an all Big Ten level player. Uh, and Koulibaly starting his career at Pitt in the ACC. A lot of time there, both playing with one foul, playing good disciplined basketball. Off the Brooks miss, Spencer pushes ahead. And Koulibaly has handled playing against Cliff well with one foul. And one. Cliff Amori not phased by a little bump. So you want to see a little bit better from that. Uh, and already he's gotten himself to the free throw line, two of two. Now Steve Peichel has raved about the improvements Amori made in the offseason. Everybody sees the threes, but it's the defense, the block we saw earlier, and the additional muscle that Amori packs that will make him even more difficult to handle in the Big Ten this year. Rutgers by eight, shooting 39%. UMass Lowell still in search of its first made three as Withers is off the mark on his third try. Yeah, that, that's look, that, that's the look that you want if you're Mass Lowell. You're 0 of 7. The shots are going to drop at some point. Uh, again, that, that's just the way it was Thursday night against Columbia, 9 of 18 from three. Spencer trying to force himself inside. Now Miller may have hit a foot. We play on as Withers starts it. Up ahead for Allende Hakeem laying it in. Yeah, nice transition, good hustle all the way around there by Withers to create the transition. Cuts it to a two-possession game. Spencer, grueling, fade away, no. Outstanding defense there down by Everett Hammond. Again, that's the second time he's done that as Mass Lowell turns it over. But a good job by Mass Lowell not to double. Remember, they stepped up when Camp Spencer penetrated, led to an easy jam for Amori. That's been one of the big stories for Spencer. Beyond his scoring, 17 and a half points a game, the steals as Amori strong on a three, and then Spencer over the back. We just saw the three put up by, by Amori who heads off. I think, it was, I think it was just an okay three. I think for Cliff, you want to look for great looks at three. I don't know if that was it so early in the shot clock. And Spencer just picked up his second foul. So Derek Simpson back on the floor. If you're just joining us, Paul Mulcahy went off about two basketball minutes ago, holding his left shoulder. Haven't seen him back on the bench. Brooks around the freshman Wolfel. And now Max Brooks up to eight points. Oh, that's nicely done for a more scrawny guy against Wolfel. Miller, no, but Wolfel right there to clean it up. Antoine Wolfel, his first two points of the day. And Rutgers has scored in a very balanced manner. So looking for some other sources now with Spencer on the bench. Mulcahy out for the moment. And now Miller trying to run the break. And he'll curl it around. Reber. Uh, fans chanting Reber. Dean Reber has added that to his game, the three-point shot, but not right there. Well, Dom, this is, a, this is a much different Rutgers lineup on the floor. No Cliff, and as I say that, he is about to come in. But no Mulcahy, no Amori, no Andre Hyatt, and of course, there's no Caleb McConnell today. Uh, so Steve Peichel at least going to buy some time with this group and no Camp Spencer, but then that changes again after 30 seconds. So, so he decided to buy some time for a couple of his starters for a couple of possessions and is now going to bring in more of his rotation players. That's the first time we've seen that rotation, that, that five on the floor this season for sure. Amori once again 
battling downstairs, but that time Koulibaly walls up. Yeah, Koulibaly's doing an outstanding job. He is big and strong. He battled against the St. Bonaventure good big man all of last year uh, that transferred to Iowa State. So he's got experience going up against power conference level guys. Hammond in the lane, floats it in. Hammond, one of those many veterans, a fifth year senior, three seasons at South Carolina Upstate, now two years at UMass Lowell. Yeah, average nine points a game, and uh, you could see for Mass Lowell, they're not hiding anybody. And and when you see this top to bottom, it might be the best roster in the America East, and what a great test today and challenge for Rutgers. Well, Folk wanted to get it to Amori, but instead UMass Lowell pushing, and now Spencer another steal as he's fouled. Bad, bad decision by Everett Hammond. That was never open. And uh, that's where you know you have to pull it back out. It, it, it's a play of aggression. As we see the pass, that was that was just never open. And that's a force, and Camp Spencer almost baited Everett Hammond into throwing that. A second steal for Cam Spencer here in the first half. His line last time out, by the way, for Spencer, 18 points, seven boards, six assists, no turnovers. First time in at least a decade that a Scarlet Knight has done that. Not only a scorer, Steve Peichel says it may not even be his best attribute. Wolfolk this time finds Amori, and it pays off. A big flush. Well, notice that both Wolfolk and Amori are playing on the floor together. I did not expect, though, that Wolfolk would be a guy that is dropping off dimes, though, and drawing the help defender. That was not necessarily expected for a guy that was considered a 6'9 project. Blunt backing down Mag. Didn't get the fortuitous bounce. And now Amori, the first into double figure scoring with 10, just grabbed a six rebound. Neither team shooting better than 40%. Defensive battle. I just found Mag, who will take the mid range. Missed. Amori, another cleanup job for sure. Persistent in the first half from Big Cliff. If someone other than Koulibaly ends up being matched up against Amori, it's real trouble on the box out. That yeah, Cliff, two for three so far today from the stripe. And they get three for four. And I'd say that the, the next level that I watch for for Cliff Amori is as, as Mass Lowell turns it over here against some 1-2-2 two, two pressure by Rutgers, uh, unforced turnover. I look for, Dom, what will occur when Cliff goes into conference play and establishes his re his reputation a la Gonzaga Drew Timmy where it's a no doubt double team. What kind of passer, how, what will he look like passing out of the double team well, reposting as the next evolution of his game in the half court? There he is in the post, there he is trying the hook, got his own miss and right back down with a flush. Omori fired up. Well, that's just j just doing shack things on the court here in a college basketball game. But what are you supposed to do? The big diesel or big cliff? 15 first half points for the junior center. Rutgers' largest lead of the first half. And now Hyatt takes it away. Rutgers to the races. And Hyatt got fouled. Uh, makings of something special there with Amori. Already blossomed into one of the most fearsome centers in the nation. And especially on a day where Rutgers is at the moment without its other two captains, aside from Amori. McConnell out with the knee tweak. Well, okay, he left early in the first half with an apparent shoulder injury. Amori taking the load upon himself to carry Rutgers as Hyatt hits both free throws. And there that begs that question for Mass Lowell. Do you double immediately on the catch. So far, only a little bit of that. They've tried to mix it up. Now, UMass Lowell could use a three. Can't even describe how badly they need it. 0 for 8 right now from distance. Now Maury will try his own triple. Miller this time on the offensive board, but got blocked. And now the scramble. And look at a tie up here. UMass Lowell has the possession arrow. Yeah, Cliff is showing his full arsenal here uh, in the opening half. And so with, with two minutes left, when you have Koulibaly on the court uh, correcting an earlier foul, he only has one at the moment. 
Uh, so here, here is a case where you have to protect Koulibaly, keep him on the court, and I think you make the choice to double down immediately on Cliff. Uh, if anything, to, to crowd him, make him pass out of it, and rely on your rotations defensively in the perimeter because there is no Paul Mulcahy, so that passing element and perimeter element uh, is just not the same for Rutgers. Koulibaly tucks it in. Beautiful move. He went right at Cliff. Five points now for Abdul Kareem Koulibaly to go with five rebounds. Remember, he had the double-double each of his first two games this season. Hyatt getting into his dribble arsenal, but commits the offensive foul. A little shoulder charge there. Yeah, using the shoulder a bit. Isolation from the top of the key. That's not really his game there. That, that's a bit of a force. Look, you're there, you're, you're trying to bully your way through. It's still early in the timer. Move the ball, pitch it to the corner, recycle it. First foul on Hyatt. Rutgers only foul trouble with Cam Spencer, who picked up two on the bench right now. Mikey Watkins, who will get the Riverhawks going from outside. Hammonds off the screen. Working on Simpson, fading away, no. Just very good defense by Simpson to not get caught for any fakes, stay solid, stay down, do not foul. And now Simpson blocked away. It was Brooks who came flying in for the stuff. And Brooks plays much bigger than six foot seven, and then his, uh, his anticipation to help defender is very high level. And now Steve Peichel will use his use-it-or-lose-it timeout here. Uh, the entry passes are too easy to cliff, too. So what has Steve Peichel cooked up? We've seen him unveil some really successful plays in these sorts of situations. Well, here just wants to work for one good look with a timer now down to seven. Spencer back on for offense with one hand. Wolfolk grabbed the rebound, but pushed off in the process. And now that's two on Antoine Wolfolk. That's okay, just, just an aggressive foul. Sometimes officials will let that go. You hit a smaller defender on him, so it looks a little bit more obvious. Rutgers has been playing offense, defense with Spencer. And so they'll take him off the floor, bring Jalen Miller back on and UMass Lowell reshuffles with Connor Withers who we've talked about has missed his three chances from three but a couple of years ago was a 36 percent shooter from distance yeah six seven shooter getting back into his rhythm after just three games played last year Alan Blunt bouncing for Koulibaly the battle continues but it's an offensive foul against Koulibaly for the hook. Yeah, he used the hook. I mean, uh, it, it's so hard to go up against Cliff uh, in, in the post, uh, even with the dribble, because look at how well Cliff moved his feet. Uh, I think if I'm Koulibaly, you, you see where Cliff is. If you don't like your spot, pass it back out, repost, get Cliff moving. That's where you can get him a little bit off edge, use a quick pump fake, and uh, have the advantage. Two fouls on Koulibaly now. He's off the floor. Shot clock off, eight seconds. Simpson ahead, over, Withers lays it in. Two more in an in athletic way for Derek Simpson. And at the end of the first half, the heave no good for Everett Hammond. Uh, perhaps there could be some swelling. I think it's the right move. He gave it a shot just to see how it would feel after warming up. Uh, the decision's been made. You have a 13-point lead. This is not the situation where, to, to risk it. Now Rutgers playing without two of its three captains with Caleb McConnell sitting out with a knee tweak. And so its third captain, Cliff Amori, has had a brilliant game. 15 points, nine boards, although he misses that 10-foot hook. Can UMass Lowell shave the deficit? That's the question. We'll have to start with hitting some threes, and what a way to start the half. Allen Blunt knocks it down after eight misses. The Riverhawks finally get one from distance. Yeah, last year he shot it at 
uh, solid guard was their leading scorer. And finally from Ash Lowell, we'll see if that unlocks them offensively. Hyatt trying to respond, but short-armed it. Outside of Amori's 15 points, Derek Simpson, Rutgers' big scorer, eight points, including four of four from the line. Rutgers 2-0 with a pair of lopsided wins over Columbia and Sacred Heart. Downstairs, Kula Bali off the pump fake, gets open and lays it in. Riverhawks 2-0 too, -two, beat an NAIA team to start and then blew out Columbia back on Thursday. Uh, fantastic use of, of uh, what's called the hostage screen there and Everett Hammond manipulating it with the layoff beautifully done. Hyatt open from three and Amori directing traffic like a quarterback to get Hyatt open across the court. And a great skip pass, too, to create that. And he is their best shooter, too. That's the other thing uh, when you realize Andre Hyatt does a lot of things very well. And Blunt's getting to a stop against Mag. It's a turnover. And the ninth one committed by the Riverhawks. And there's another look at Paul Mulcahy, who is back on the Rutgers bench. That was live right there. If, you re if he re-enters, you'll see it as quickly as we do. Derek Simpson, the freshman, getting more minutes in Mulcahy's absence. Spencer, contested three. It made no difference. Cam Spencer, always money from deep. Wow, that's... As a defender, you've done everything you could. Good closeout without fouling. It's just better offense. And now pokes it away. Cam Spencer has been as complete a player in his first week at Rutgers as you could possibly hope for. Look, you can't say hand down, man down. <laughs> it's hand up, ball in. <laughs> Spencer, a nearly 40% career three-point shooter, and now the defense harassing as Mag takes it away. What will Simpson do? He tries to take it himself, got blocked, but Amori there for one more flush. Dunk City today for Cliff Amori. Big reason why he's got a game high 17 points. Well, Mass Lowell had avoided for, for the for the most part of the first half live ball turnovers. And that's now a couple here that lead to easy ones on the other end for Rutgers. If they're gonna stay in this game here on the road, these have to be eliminated. Yeah, just four steals so far today for Rutgers, notable because they averaged more than 15 over the first two games. And this is the best team. Uh, I would even say, I think there's a large gap, actually, between Columbia, Sacred Heart, and Mass Lowell uh, that Rutgers has faced. Kulabali tries a three, missed it, and high at high for the board. And now behind the play, Cam Spencer and Max Brooks got tangled up. And I haven't seen any fouls yet, but our official just bringing in his back for a talking to, like a soccer ref issuing a yellow card. So our official's gonna go to the monitor here and look at this again. Spencer and Brooks got tangled up, but again, as of now, no fouls or texts or anything issued. Yeah, this was just a, a whistle not for a foul, but to, to prevent anything further from escalating, going down to the other end. Uh, once Max Brooks, I think, got up, maybe that was the concern of the official if he might retaliate. Yeah, ninth most experienced team in the country. The average age of UMass Lowell is probably 22 and a half. So they're not intimidated. They have, they have players that have been at other stops that have played plenty of power conference teams. In the case of Koulibaly, played three years in the ACC. So uh, I think these guys are, are, have shown that they're not going to panic. Mori couldn't oop the alley from Hyatt. And now UMass Lowell off to the races with Hakeem, who missed it, but the follow put back by Brooks. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's foolish. Max Brooks just did a chin up on the rim. It's a wide open dunk. There just isn't really any reason for this. You're you're very you're very athletic. You're very wiry. Just no need. 
There's no need. You, you, take a, you take a personal foul there. You give up free points on the other end. Uh, and, and there's a guy like Spencer, who's on the court, by the way, who can nail free throws in the high 80s. So that puts Cam Spencer for his career 86% at the stripe for two. And you could see Max Brooks arguing his case to his coaching staff, saying, hey, I'm just trying to make sure I don't fall on somebody below me. But officials at several of the highest levels, of course, D1 and, and the NBA, have policed this lately then unless there's somebody right under you, you've got to let go of the rim immediately. Yeah, and there was, look, there was no for one. For better or for worse, I there, should add. There was no one in the radius for Max Brooks. Uh, we saw it live and confirmed upon the, upon the replay. Uh, th th that's just a guy being excited after a dunk, but you need to have discipline. So the Brooks dunk ends an 8-0 Rutgers run, but the Scarlet Knights get those points back. Mm. And now Amori fouled. As UMass Lowell reached in, that was Hammond. Yeah, that's a good dig down, though. Koulibaly at this point with two fouls, still early second half. Again, the longer he plays, the better your chances are in this game. Other games, you might sub him out a little bit, not with Omori on the other side. Spencer, silky from mid-range. Nine points for Cam Spencer as he starts to get hot, get hot here in the second yeah, half. Yeah, he was so wide open, it was, it was like... It was like a practice, you know, when there's no one on the court and you're just going, to, going through the plays. Good hook pass there from Koulibaly. Mm. How did he find Brooks on that? Mm, what a cut and what a, what a pass from a 6'10 center on the move. Mass Lowell trying to hang around. Simpson from the mid-range, back of the rim. We know the River Hawks can run, but Rutgers again back in transition as Everett Hammond will start the offense. Yeah, I think if you ask Pat Duquette right now, that's the disappointing thing about the offense is that they haven't found anything today in transition. Four fast break points for UMass Lowell. Hammond, nice crossover over Amori and Mag. How about a third try, finally a foul. Rutgers, UMass Lowell starting to get to the rim a little bit more. It is a 16-point game with free throws coming up. But for Rutgers still, this game is still not comfortable for them yet. Uh, a, a guy that knows how to play with it himself. Uh, and I think he's a guy that understands that Cliff Amori uh, you know, could, be, could be the Kofi Coburn this year of what we've seen in the Big Ten and is going to find him. And he's, he's comfortable not taking a ton of shots. Yeah, I think he's comfortable as a basketball player. Uh, uh, playing with himself, and as we've noticed here, uh, first five minutes, Dom, second half, Cam Spencer has been much more involved offensively here than the entire first half. Four shots in the second half already compared to just two in the first. They've all gone in. Two from the floor, including a three and a pair of free throws. But the story for Rutgers, Cliff Amori, first double-double of the season, 17 points, 10 boards. And as Spencer got held by Hammond on the backdoor cut. And Derek Simpson back on. What an explosive first half, how he changed the game. Uh, and it happened just as, just as Rutgers lost Paul Mulcahy. Uh, Simpson just seemed to feel like uh, he had to get aggressive. And Spencer elicits a foul there. The whole move there from Spencer, even though it doesn't result, results in a basket made, getting to the corner quickly, the spin move to get open, and the physicality here to... So the speed to beat the defender and the physicality to, to go through some contact. And I think he'll be making an adjustment when once Big Ten play happens. It's not like he's it's not like he hasn't faced power conference competition non-league when he was with Loyola. That happened, but to do it on a nightly basis when uh, you're going to have Zach Eady on the floor at some point uh, when he faces Purdue and, and other tremendous bigs and a Trace Jackson Davis uh, that, that you go up against. So, uh, so th there still will be an adjustment period for him uh, against that level of competition where you might face three top 25 teams in succession in a week. Three straight games for Cam Spencer in double digits to start his Rutgers career. 11 so far today. And the Scarlet Knights back in front by 16. UMass Lowell trying 
to shave the deficit as Breeden O'Connor, the one freshman in the rotation, misses that. Yeah, they're very excited about him on an older team. He's the one guy that can also add a shooting element. And Spencer stepped out of bounds there as O'Connor kept him right along the baseline. As we saw Paul Mulcahy, I, I, I think even though he's rejoined the team based on what the score is at this point, I think it's safe to say that he's not going to re-enter. And uh, that'll be uh, important for Rutgers to learn how to play. If he's going to miss time coming up, it's going to be important to, for them to figure out how to play without him for long stretches. And he has been just so reliable when he first stepped on the court as a freshman and playing whatever role Rutgers needed. Koulibaly gained the inside edge on Amori, and two more for Abdul Kareem Koulibaly, 11 so far today. The River Hawks have trailed by as many as 18, but a top 150 Ken Palm team not going away easily as O'Connor gets the block. I think they have the size, number one, that's, that's probably well above America East level, then the guard depth that they have. Uh, this is a team when, when we get to March, I wouldn't be surprised if, if people are talking about, you know, how about UMass Lowell as a 15 seed? And, you know, if you're going to pick one 15 to win an NCAA tournament first round game, it might be this team because of uh, their comp composition and, uh, and, and what they have uh, just passing the eye test. Fight for the loose ball. I thought that was off Wolfolk last but it's saved back in by Koulibaly, and so Rutgers will have it with a fresh 30. Simpson off the dribble drive, kicking to where Hyatt was. Yeah, and that's the first time I've really seen him out of control. Uh, he probably had a mid-range jumper in him or a drive underneath and then curl around. Instead, he got caught in between and decided to look for someone uh, in the opposite wing. We've documented it with Mulcahy out here. Spencer already getting plenty of minutes, getting even more, and Derek Simpson getting plenty of minutes too. He's played 23 of them so far. Quentin Mincy, haven't said his name much today. Agile wing player shows it there. In the end, it's Abdul Kareem Koulibaly who collects the points. Well, the River Hawks have been able to get to the paint a lot more in the second half. That's why they're scoring. And now they've outscored Rutgers in the second. Spencer left open. That's dangerous, but UMass Lowell dodging it. And now a chance for the River Hawks to make it a single-digit game. The latest addition, Koulibaly against Amori. Kick out. Watkins tries the three and knocks it down. And now it is a nine-point game. Uh, Just the second three tonight. Fantastic for the Linden kid. Notice how he relocated. Entry pass, cut, relocate for the three. Uh, working with uh, Cliff Amori inside. They have, uh, for whatever reason, they've been in the paint a lot more. A couple of nice layoffs for Koulibaly. They have to continue that. And then they'll start to find wide open three-point shooters as Rutgers starts to inherently get sucked in a little bit. Reber just set a brutal screen, now goes to the rim, but missed the lay-in. I think he turned down in wide open three. That was in rhythm, the trail three. Dean's got to take that. Somebody for, for this Rutgers offense to be successful, him as a stretch four when he's on the court, that's a big deal. That, that improves Cliff Amori if Dean Reber can add that to his game consistently and show it on the court. Watkins just hit a three and passed out of a chance there. And now up ahead, Hyatt lays it in. A much needed basket for Rutgers. Oh, what a pass that was to lead there. The Rutgers coming up with the big steal, the catalyst of its great start. And now a foul as Withers dove to the rim. And that'll send us back to a break. Rutgers trying to stave off UMass Lowell and loving the fact the Scarlet Knights are off to the races. And, and they're, still they're, surrounded by, yeah, they're still there, surrounded by the two veterans. 
Max Brooks off the inbound, tucks in two more. And he's got a team high 14 points, 7 of 11 shooting, plus 9 rebounds for a guy whose best attribute is blocking shots. Miller trying to bounce it to Wolfolk, who somehow keeps it alive. They've got Hammond playing without a sneaker on this possession. On the back down, Wolfolk off the backboard, yes! Gets the two in a five on four and a half scenario. That was actually Yuri Covington who had his left sneaker in his hand trying to help out best he could. Hey, he picked up the sneaker and used it to help on the box out. <laughs> But that's a nice back down by Wolfork, realizing, look, I am big and strong. Uh, he simply just leaned on the defender and got himself to a comfortable right-hand jump hook situation. Four points for Wolfolk, who stays out here as Amori and Spencer re-enter. Slashing to the rim, Hakeem mm. around Amori. Mm. And Tell again, you, an example of UMass little guards going to the rim. Tell you, at the end of last year, Ayinde Hakeem averaged 16 points, four assists the last 10 games and he was turning into their go-to guy before they added the three transfers. Now Maury will go to the line as Brooks commits a foul. And here's a rare instance, Dom, where Max Brooks goes back to playing the five spot where he had played entirely last season because Koulibaly is getting maybe his only rest of the game right now uh, with Mass Lowell getting back to the, within single digits. Uh, and as I say, that Koulibaly is going to check in, so it's going to be a very brief maybe three-minute rest of real time uh, because Pat Duquette just cannot afford Max Brooks or any of his other players getting overwhelmed on the back down. Koulibaly has shown, despite Omori's numbers today, 18 and 11, he's done a pretty good job against him. Yeah, first double-double of the season for Omori, who said he wants to average a double-double this year. He was close in each of the first two games and has completed that today. So one out of two, back down for Koulibaly, and Hyatt got caught in the air, just commits the, the smart foul at that point. Yeah, Mass Lowell has been using those wing ball screens so well with their guards, just getting into the paint and getting Rutgers in compromised positions on switches. They've created fouls. Covington with a sneaker back on. Highlighted him in the open, he was UMass Lowell's best player in the Columbia game, and now he commits the foul on the kickout. That's Andre Hyatt down on the court. I think he committed the foul on his own follow-through. He was the shooter, and he committed the foul while shooting, a la the Reggie Miller kick, I think. I think that's what he's going to get called on the foul on if we see a second look at it, and that's why they're looking at the monitor. They've tried to eliminate this also from the game. Uh, Yuri Covington is looking up at the video board to see the replay that the officials are looking at right now, trying to diagnose whether he just committed a foul. Here it is. Uh, it, it just eludes the picture right at the bottom. Yeah, it, it was definitely a kick out game. It, it just uh, it causes a headache uh, for officials. I think it's also dangerous uh, too, both for the for the shooter themselves, uh, because who knows how they might come down on a player by attempting that Reggie Miller kick out, uh, but then also for the defender too, like Andre Hyatt. You're already in a vulnerable position because you're coming out of the closeout. Amori. On the back down, lays it in. We don't often see layups from Cliff Amori, but uses it there, and he's got 20 today. Rutgers trying to stave off a veteran UMass Lowell side, and now they force another steal. Spencer, head up, distributes to Simpson. Missed the three. But Amori cleaning it up. And a foul on the floor. Yeah, Cliff is just so big and strong, even for Koulibaly. 
Uh, Koulibaly is more on the six foot nine slender side. Once they crashed in together, he's just too hard to push off deeper outside of the block. On uh, two big nuggets there, it's the third foul against Abdul Karim Koulibaly, and it's the seventh one against UMass Lowell. So Rutgers in the bonus the rest of the way. And Amori has been good from the line today, five of seven. Honorable mention, all Big Ten last year. I think higher accolades in store for Cliff this year as he ties his career high with 22 points. Dunks, hook shots, layups, mid-range jumpers, and free throws today for Amori. Hakeem off the spin, nearly gave it away. And now Hakeem bounces it right to Cam Spencer. And Wolfolk finally claims the ball. Yeah, Mass Lowell did not have good floor spacing in that case. They got the wing, the wing ball screen, but they didn't have anybody in the opposite corner further enough. Wolfolk, now he got fouled, and he'll go to the line. Yeah, that's a mismatch there against a guard, against a 6'3 Everett Hammond. So he's trying to do everything he can, because once Wolfolk puts the ball on the floor, uh, it's going to be over. And now the foul situation for UMass Lowell getting in the way of their upset attempts. Everett Hammond starting guard to the bench with four fouls. Mentioned Koulibaly's got three. Max Brooks, their starting power forward, three fouls as well. That first free throw for Wolfolk, and he's one and done. Allende Hakeem getting around Wolfolk, but didn't get around Big Cliff. A thunderous rejection. A little bit of a stare down at the end of this, too. <laughs> now he's snarling. Amori in his own on a career day. Hakeem pulls up before Amori and then commits the turnover. Now Simpson trying to find Amori for another flush, but that's a giveaway. Hakeem opens the lane and one. Yeah, nice job by India Hakeem going right to the paint. Last possession, Dom. Even though Cliff Amori is not going to get credit for any stat, he prevented uh, Allende from shooting. He could have shot the floater, and against 90% of the bigs in the country, they would take that. He was worried about getting a shot blocked from the free throw line on the previous possession. I'm worried about a second highlight reel block from Amori. Hyatt there for a rebound. And a, a thing, a stat an attribute that Hyatt has worked on in the offseason, and important there for Rutgers as UMass Lowell is again back within a dozen. The freshman Simpson running the point off the cross, cuts the lane, missed it, and now Hakeem has it, and a chance for the Riverhawks to run. In rhythm, Blunt for three, bangs it. And back within single digits. Uh, there are other great players in it, but Right now, maybe not, but around February 20th, I think it's possible that he could be, based on his rate of growth, and he could surpass a couple of the other great players like Trace Jackson Davis in this conference, which is staggering to say. Uh, Hyatt missed it off the kick out. Fight for the loose ball stays here. Now that's big because UMass Lowell has won the rebound battle so far, especially in this second half, nearly two to one. Yeah, and they're out shooting Rutgers for the game, 41 to 36%. And you look back at the first half, the missed three-point shots by Mass Lowell. Uh, again, if you're, that's what you're gonna lament if you're Pat Duquesne and you lose in this game. Look at this foul that Spencer just 
lured Mikey Watkins into. And now Spencer, a veteran against another vet in Watkins, will get himself to the line for the one and one, or for, pardon me, now two free throws with a double bonus. Mm -hmm. yeah, and Camp Spencer, during his Tom Loyola, he was known as the closer uh, because of his free throw shooting end of games. Uh, and, and of course, he, he was a, such a low turnover player, it was hard to speed him up. Uh, Loyola did a lot of winning, and uh, most importantly, like a great closer, if you have a, a, a game that, you, when you have a lead, he was finishing it. He was taking them home consistently. Rutgers back in front by 11. Hakeem off the Koulibaly screen, and Simpson poked it away. Simpson fouled. The Spencer and Simpson show on that fast break. Yeah, that was never open on the other end for Mass Lowell. They, they tried to feed the ball into Koulibaly. It's, it's just not a great decision by Ayinde Hakim. You're trying to thread the needle with a pass. It's still early in the shot clock. Go to the wing. Go to the wing, reset. Derek Simpson has taken his first five college free throws today, and he's hit them all. Rutgers as a group. 86% at the stripe. In a game where you miss a few, UMass Lowell gets a couple of the wide open threes they've missed. And this game is much different than the already close 13 point margin it's at right now. Four straight points for the, from the line for Rutgers. Brooks back in, wide of the lane, lays it in. Tough shot there for Max Brooks. Mass Lowell has found points in the paint today. That, that's the most impressive thing. A team that came in shooting 43% from three in their first two games. I, I know it's against lesser competition, but look, you still got to go out and make the shots at a high rate. Amori, short, Hyatt had it. Mag finds it, lays it in. <laughs> Rutgers with power in the paint. That's going to have to be Moat Mag's role on this team, and that's what it's been. That's what's gotten him on the floor. And he has to lead this team from an energy perspective anytime he's on the court. And then as his offensive game develops, Dom, in the half court, he's got to look for his drives, but right now he's a guy that you don't run plays for, but he's got to look for his spots to attack the rim. Well, that foul, the fifth one on Everett Hammond, starting guard for UMass Lowell. So he's done for the remaining 650. Allen Blunt, low pass, Brooks has it. Good feed to get Watkins open, and a much needed triple there for the Riverhawks. Yeah, the loss of Hammond hurts because he was one of the couple of Mass Lowell guards that showed the ability, along with uh, Allende Hakeem, to penetrate against Rutgers. So far in this second half, they've been much better getting in the paint. Simpson to the mid-range, oh yeah! Simpson with a dozen points today. Rutgers back in front by a dozen. Hakeem answers, tough shot. That was an incredibly tough angle. I, I think that may have been slightly behind the backboard. To said that about Max Brooks' shot as well. A couple of difficult takes from the Riverhawks that they've needed and converted on here to stay in it. Now UMass Lowell in the second half shooting 67%. And I'll add to that, to add context to that stat, Dom, the degree of difficulty on their shot attempts. Uh, it, it has not been gimmies. It has not been all right-hand layups. Uh, Rutgers has made them work. I think Steve Peichel's defense has forced him into uncomfortable shots. Mag missed it from downtown. Watkins, an all-conference guard at Merrimack. He's a veteran. So is Brooks, but missed it. Extra pass for Blunt. In and out on a three. Oh, <laughs> would it change the game? 
Instead, Simpson. And now Mag travels. <laughs> Kayla McConnell perplexed. Eleventh turnover against Rutgers here as Steve Peichel gets in some of his defense enforcers. Jalen Miller, Antoine Wolfolk on. Yeah, he's going to go younger with Spencer taking a seat here. So Rutgers all of a sudden gets very young in the backcourt with, with Simpson and Miller. A freshman and a sophomore. Hakeem. Nearly taken away, but instead, Wolfel commits the foul, his fourth. Yeah, it, it, it's a cheap foul. I understand the look on Steve Peichel's face. Yeah, there's, there's, there's just not a whole lot there. Next foul against Rutgers puts UMass Lowell in the bonus. Amori. Got his paw on it and takes it away. Mm, bad, bad turnover by, by Hakeem. He got stuck in the corner. His teammates needed to come out and help and support in that situation. And that, that's, that's what I would characterize as a team turnover, even though it'll be marked against the individual. Still this. UMass Lowell with the next Rutgers foul will get into the bonus as well. It could be a free throw battle. Zone look here, Dom, for the first time. Under Pat Duquette, they rarely have played zone in his 10 years. Good save by Mag. He'll try the three and short on it. And off Koulibaly, who is pestered by Amori from behind. Everything but the rebound. They got, they got someone not named Cam Spencer or Andre Hyatt to shoot the three. And Mass Lowell did everything but get the rebound. Rutgers was not able to get the ball in the sweet spots against the zone. Uh, here is Spencer with the ball. Thought about it for Simpson. Instead finds Amori. Fading away. Oh, it's a tough shot for Amori. And missed it. Yeah, if you're going to make him try to be Nikola Jokic, you'll take that all day. <laughs> and now Spencer holding his sneaker as he skidded to a stop there. I don't know if it's the sneaker or the, the right foot or ankle. O'Connor missed the three. Yeah, I think the sneaker came, has come undone from the bottom, the foam bottom detached from the upper part of his sneaker. Well, I'm surprised the, he asked the official for a, an equipment stoppage. We get a foul instead. Uh, tip of the cap, though, to, to Rutgers staff. We get to interact with them a bit, too, in our work uh, in the media. Mike Sasso, video coordinator. Tyler Cook, the grad assistant. Mike Larkin, the Dobo. Director of Basketball Operations, Tom Barrett. External relations. Do great work in addition to the, the coaching staff, the five coaches on that roster. Well, uh, not, one out of two here for Hyatt, 11 point game. Should also add, not to forget about the great Chris Corso. Yeah. Second year sports information director. Bounce downstairs, Brooks claims, fouled. Amori flying in, looking for another block. That's five now on Wolfolk. Wow, they did put that on Wolfolk. I've been impressed with how Mass Lowell has gotten the ball into the paint on the edge of the paint area, coming off of a screen where their guards have, for the most part, made I'd say, good decisions. They've had some bad turnovers. And they have 16, but they have found the ball either Koulibaly or Max Brooks on the backside of those passes uh, very well. To make it a single digit game once again. No. And then a foul against Derek Simpson. No, a lane, lane violation, violation against the freshman Simpson. We'll give Brooks a second try. Late in a 10 point game, those things get policed. And Brooks missed it again. So 
So it stays a 10-point margin. For a Rutgers team with wins of 38 and 40 points to start the season. This, not quite that. Spencer trying to post, and Watkins takes it away. Watkins inside the paint. Koulibaly off the bounce, foul and one. Oh, great patience from Abdul Kareem Koulibaly. You're always aware inside against Rutgers, you're asking yourself the question, where is Cliff Amori as you go up? You don't want to get swatted. It's hard to get fouls on him. He uses the rim to shield away from Cliff, and good patience there. A lot of guys will rush that. They'll try to do, make too much of it. He showed his, his four years of college experience there. Koulibaly rattles it in. Four of five from the stripe. 16 points, eight boards today. And that foul on Cliff Amori, his third of the evening. As Koulibaly goes to the bench with three of his own personal fouls. Should remind you, UMass Lowell has not led at any point in this game. Rutgers had built the lead up to as many as 18 as Watkins took it away from Spencer, but now Spencer along two, missed it. Hyatt on the offensive glass, and he will shoot some free throws now as it becomes a charity stripe battle. I love the intensity of Mikey Watkins defending on the perimeter. Uh, something he did very well. He was known as kind of a defensive stopper off the bench for Merrimack as he knocked the ball away from Cam Spencer, and Cam might have rushed that three uh, a little bit as he freed himself. Part of why he missed it, but Rutgers got the offensive rebound. Hyatt's now three for five from the stripe. Somebody who had some humongous free throws last year for Rutgers, late season in a road win over Indiana at Assembly Hall. Came off the bench cold and hit two big free throws to clinch the game. And now Steve Peichel inviting the Jersey Mike Serena fans to make some noise. Blunts for Watkins. Blunts trying to get around Mag. Now Koulibaly drives with the left hand, it's good. And it's a six point game, two minutes to go. Uh, he has shown no fear, calculated moves by Abdul Karim Koulibaly every time he has attacked against one of the nation's best bigs. Big minutes for the freshman Simpson. Career night for Amori. Doubled. Simpson takes short. Rebound Mag. And it's back out for Spencer. Amori comes for the screen. Spencer. Wide of the lane, off balance, couldn't bank it in. And the rebound for Blunt. A chance to make it a one possession game. Attacking the rim, Hakeem missed it. And then a foul on the rebound against Rutgers. Two free throws for Brooks, smart decision there. With time and score coming up on a minute, attack the rim before Cliff Amori and Rutgers can get established defensively. And then Max Brooks on the weak side, a, a long and lean lefty. He is going to be a, a, he, he is a problem uh, in the America East Conference. I really like the personnel that we're seeing here on the floor for Mass Lowell. Brooks just missed two at the stripe. It's a one and one, and he missed another. But Mag, whoa! They say it's off Allen Blunt going over Mawat Mag. They will review that, though. Mag seemed to be the closest by a couple feet to the ball. Quick in, Brooks missed the layup. Oh boy, he got a great look. Pressure here 
from UMass Lowell. Rutgers just gets it across the timeline, and Cam Spencer will take Rutgers' final timeout. Spencer, Simpson, Omori, and Mag. And the lob goes in for Omori. No rush to foul him. You don't have to, of course, if you're UMass Lowell, which also has two timeouts. Simpson, the freshman, to the free throw line. Foul before the shot. Mm. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You, you, get, you get a shot up with eight seconds left. Pat Duquette is beside himself, and rightfully so. I mean, there's very little. There's very little there. That's a bailout call for Rutgers. Now Rutgers in the double bonus anyway, so Derek Simpson, whose first college free throws have come tonight. He's been money at the line. Seven for seven. And now Pat Duquette will attempt to ice. But now one more free throw for the youngin, Derek Simpson. Got it. Cold-blooded. 14 points today for Simpson. Rutgers now by eight. Brooks, Watkins, ops out of the three, in the lane. Amori got it again! Blocked away by Big Cliff. And Spencer going to the line. And it's all reliable at the stripe, trying to ice. One more for Spencer. Eight for eight today at the line. Hasn't missed a free throw as a Scarlet Knight. And now Rutgers by 10, 28 seconds left. Quick hoist from Hakeem. Front rim, Simpson the rebound. He's fouled. And Rutgers feeling it. UMass Lowell got it within two possessions, but key free throws putting Rutgers in front now by double digits. Yeah, and you look back, uh, key play late here was was the missed layup right on the baseline out of bounds by Max Brooks. Uh, oh boy, what a finish this could have been uh, had that shot gone, gone down. But uh, as Rutgers is going to make the rest of these free throws, but uh, I think this is the game that we'll think back on as this is the Derek Simpson game. People might call this the, the Cliff Amore game, but I'm going to argue with you, Dom, and say this is the Derek Simpson game to me. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Paul Mulcahy's shoulder. Maybe it's short term, maybe it's just, who knows uh, what that will be. But uh, he is showing tremendous poise. He's going up against very old guards on the other side. Uh, and he gives Rutgers a chance to win now. Watkins misses the three. O'Connor puts it back in, but still a 10 point game. 13 seconds left, clock hasn't started, now it does. And so Spencer stuck in the corner. Watkins takes it away, lays it in, but only five seconds left. And Rutgers by eight. And that'll do it. Great second half effort from UMass Lowell, but Rutgers emerges from opening week unbeaten. A 73-65 win over UMass Lowell.